My name is Jason Rohde and I'm a father, filmmaker, dreamer and believer. I, like all of us, am a storyteller. Since time immemorial, we humans have told stories about our past, where we come from, our history, our present day, in the news or on social media, or when we answer how we're doing on any particular day, or the future, our ambitions, our fears, and uh, possible worlds. So stories are how we bring meaning to the world and to our lives. The first story I was ever told was that of my father, born of Maria Camera, who just passed away on Monday. Maria lived in a small Italian village with no electricity or running water. She was orphaned at birth, married at 14, had her first child at 15, and her third was my father. My father, just to give you an idea, was born in a barn on the 25th of December, so already you can see kind of biblical proportions to this story. My father would come to Canada at eight years old with a grand vision for himself, and through intense perseverance, he would not only become the wealthiest person I knew, but also the most traveled man ever. Imagine that. Imagine trying to live up to that. So I, I, I couldn't reach such heights, and I didn't think I could ever live up to him, which is why I think I became an artist, to set myself apart. But it was my grandfather, my mother's father, Leo, who would show me singing in the rain when I was only five or six years old. This movie had an immense influence on me as it was about filmmakers transitioning into the sound era. They made making movies look so much fun and easy with everyone falling into song and dance or the shot traveling across the studio to showing like a jungle scene, a football, movie and then a western in the background. So as far back as I can remember that became my dream. To be in there with them, to live that life of that kind of life of a filmmaker, to live in the movie. You see we all picture ourselves as the hero of our own journey, right? Whenever I would find myself falling into the background like as a child under my father's shadow, or graduating university, just another aspiring filmmaker with little to show for myself, I struggled inside, searching aimlessly for my true self, not realizing that no one ever finds themselves. You create yourself. I didn't want to have to ask anyone permission to make movies. I wanted to be free to create. And it's from this existential crisis that my vision was born, a never-ending movie, always live, that I would spend my life making. Back then in 1999, I saw it sort of like a TV station, a constant stream of consciousness, a never expanding universe. That's what seemed closest to my dream then, to my true essence. Meanwhile, my father was still climbing and climbing, always improving himself and becoming ever more unreachable with his personal success. All I had was a desire to expand the world of cinema somehow. That's when I discovered VJing, which is like DJing but mixing video instead of music. This emerging art form was a revelation to me as it was a more active and immersive form of cinema. It was performative too, so it married my love of acting and filmmaking. It undid everything I'd learned in school, even freeing me from the confines of the screen. I could project my images and immerse people into the experience. I was finding ways of entering the movie live. This is how Moment Factory was born. In 2001, I began uploading one video per week onto momentfactory.com. And before long, I started receiving similar video moments from fellow artists and VJs. And others started asking, what is Moment Factory? So with a fellowship of creators, we began blending our diverse skills in art direction, technology, and cinema to create video environments for shows, architecture, and, and all kinds of mixed media installations. I was 25 years old, and I didn't know it then, but just because I'd started trying to make my weird, elusive dream happen, my life was beginning to take shape. Right then, I had an experience that would show me the true power of storytelling, the power of manifestation. 
I was at Mount Everest Base Camp alongside my father when I remembered a comic book I'd written when I was only 10 years old called A Man in His Dream about a boy climbing Mount Everest to prove himself to his father. And there I was, living out a vision from my younger self. As I reached the summit, it dawned on me that were it not for my father showing me that everything was indeed possible, that I wouldn't be there then. I was still the same five-year-old boy watching Sing in the Rain. I hadn't transformed into a, a movie character. I was the same flawed person following his dreams with his camera. I took this idea and turned it into a life hack, making a film called 99 Cent Dreams that turned reality into fiction by staging dreams of freedom, fame, fortune, or in my case, time travel, to the past by editing my memories, to the present moment by going to the North and South Poles where all timelines meet, and even to the future by scripting the lives we wanted to live. I learned then the secret to living your dreams is gratitude. That's what being a believer is. Full, unabashed gratitude. You spend time with your dreams until they become vivid visions so that when you come across them, you'll recognize them. Your dreams won't pass you by and you'll appreciate and experience the moment fully. So to keep the moment alive, the dream alive, I try to believe in everything because there is truth in everything. It's all a matter of perception. Without that open faith, I can't truly feel and fully explore the human experience and the expanse of my imagination. So I believe in God, gods, and all things holy with complete surrender and awe. It sounds easy said like that, and it is in a way, if you know how to keep yourself in check, not to get carried away by the current of your life, because there are traps, right? Like success can be a trap where you, you might do well at something and then repeat it to lesser success. Or uh, you, you might be good at a job or uh, in, you might be having success in a business and finding that you're really furthering yourself from, from your true self, from your best self. One way I found to stay true to myself is to remember as far back as possible my original purest dreams before reality got in the way. I feel that's where my essence lies and I try to stay connected with that at all times, all times, and embody that essence. I remind myself of what I wanted to be when I grew up and then I be that, living my movie in real time, like Gene Kelly singing in the rain or you know, Indiana Jones going on adventures, or Marty McFly time traveling. I'm telling you about this because for a while I'd gotten trapped in my success, lost my way. In my early 30s, I found myself running this amazing company with my partners, Section and Dumb, and the name Moment Factory guided me, shaping my identity and my work, until I eventually realized that I drifted away from my destiny. Thus, I started a new venture called Nomad, Nomad for freedom, movement, possibilities, and a sense of belonging to something greater than any company, belonging to an idea. It wasn't a business decision. It was about manifesting the best version of myself now. Nomad would give me the confidence to sell Moment Factory. And with my earnings, I bought a building off the tracks of the Montreal Mile End, which would soon become a magical creative hub, my own studio where everything is possible, like in Singing in the Rain. This space is open for anyone to create, express, produce, having formed a thriving community of creatives and entrepreneurs that has been growing and gathering at Nomad for over 15 years now. With everything at my disposal, I have no excuse not to pursue my dreams. And that's where everything I've done came from, from always trying to picture what I would do if I had no limits at all. And that's what I do. And somehow it always turns out better than what I'd imagined because I let it take the shape it wants to. All we have is now is the way I like to put it. We just need to make the most of it. So I've made movies, installations, 
events and plays at Nomad. We did this one play nearly 30 times uh, called All We Have Is Now, an immersive experience about people trapped in a movie. And uh, most recently, we did a ritualistic gathering I call antenna, mixing performance, psychedelics, projections, and presence to fully immerse ourselves in the movie, in the now. It's like my whole life has led to this place in time, Nomad, where my creative and spiritual journey truly became one. Much of this vision unfolded organically, following my bliss always, disciplining myself to do what I love. Following my bliss, surrendering to God, I see my movie come to life in the form of synchronicity, providence, and manifestation. You experience a coincidence, and instead of asking yourself what it means, you inject meaning and turn it into a moment of synchronicity. You become aware of these synchronicities in your life, forming a story in your mind. And notice these coincidences pointing towards a certain path inside. When committing to this path, then providence moves too, opening the path for you in countless unforeseen ways. All because you are telling yourself this story, focusing your thoughts and energies down your path. Your dreams manifest into reality. I'll give you another personal example of manifestation. After climbing the seven summits with my father, he and I embarked on a historic journey to the summit of Buvetoya, the most remote island on the planet, in the last place on earth, where I left a time capsule containing visions of the future. Now, I never intended for anyone to find it, but I planted it there to create an idealistic vision for the future. It was only a symbol, yet just a couple of years ago, someone in Spain saw my movie and made a play, a fictional sequel to my factual film. And at the very end of this play, the actors rip through the screen behind them to cross over to the other side into the movie where they bury an exact replica of my time capsule under the stage. In my wildest dreams, I never could have imagined my time capsule ever being found, let alone an expedition, albeit a fictional one, bringing it back to tell the tale. That concluded what I came to call my Time Rider trilogy with the Eye of the Sun, 99ths and Dreams, and The Last Place on Earth, exploring the idea of scripting my past, present, and future. So today, how am I fulfilling my life's purpose, living my movie, embodying my essence? Well, I'm very proud to tell you that three years ago I launched a bona fide TV channel called Nomad Slow TV a stream of consciousness, a never-ending visual poem with meditative visions of heaven on earth. Meant to simply exist in one's environment, the channel reflects an idealized vision of our world. This vision constantly surrounds me on every screen in my home, my studio, shaping my perception and self. Storytelling is what makes us human. It is an intrinsic part of who we are as spiritual beings having a human experience. That journey is the story. My dreams aren't for later. They're rooted in the present, in gratitude. Even now, giving this TED talk at my alma mater, no, no less, where I first did any kind of public speaking, it's a dream come true. Here I am living my dream. Today, I dream of every day being better than the last, of my children believing in their own myths, and living full lives, of slow TV expanding everyone's vision of our world. I dream of reflecting my bliss, witnessing all things interconnected and divine, of heaven here and now. These are my dreams, and this is the movie I'm making. I leave you with this, my favorite quote, probably many of you have heard it, it's from Goethe. Whatever you can do, or dream you can, Begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Thank you very much.